Hi, welcome back to The Indefatigable. Russell Bryan. In this episode, what we'd like to do is try and answer some of your questions. And I've written down here a small list and we'll go through them. Um, I'll just get some glasses. That's better. Right, some of the questions were on the Turk's head. Uh, introduce the colour, expand the bites, loop for the key rings. Books, what type of books, what would I recommend, what do I use? Flat knots, pegboards, corks. What type of line? This comes up quite often. What type, where do I get my line from? And of course I've got a small one at the bottom which is a hobby for all ages and I may ask the people under 75 to look away for 30 seconds when we do that one. Okay, first question, uh, Peter Roberts. Hi, Peter. Now, Peter was actually making some key rings with his father when he was younger, and he can't remember how his father used to introduce the colour into the Turk's head. Okay, now this Turk's head is just the normal Turk's head. I think it's a four bite, three lead, and this is actually on our website on liverpoolshipsandsailors.com which you can go and uh, look at if you haven't sort of, if this is the first time you're joining us today. Now, when you actually, as you'll see from our videos, at the end, on the first turn on the Turk's head, these two lines must come together. So they run alongside each other. And then to complete the Turk's head, it's simply this line will follow this one round and this line here will follow that bite round and that will form the Turk's head. But at this particular stage, you can now introduce a colour. That's what we've got here. Now, you can go in the centre or you can go either side. If you go on the side, you can put red and what the white ones there and you can put a blue one in and you can have red, white and blue if you like. But for this demonstration, we're just going to go in the centre. So you can just take, pick it up from here as though that's a new piece of line into there, nice and tight. Now, you simply, at this now, is just follow it round. So it just follows over, follows the lead, under, over, under and over, until it comes out like that. That's what you would actually get at the end of it. So I'll just go through that again. As Soon as the Turk's head on the first bite, and these two leads have come together, before you just expand the knot by following the lead here you can introduce the colour there now that's the sort of thing you can actually do with this you see on here I've introduced a red and the, the, the white blue green you can have them whatever colour you like so that's it that's the literally between the two or go alongside and then you can then just follow the knot round and it'll come out like that. Next question was expanding the bites. Right, expanding the bites. This, I put this Turk's head round um, a piece of, that was turned on the lathe. And as you can see how big it is. Now, if, if I, that Turk's head, if I was to um, do a normal Turk's head, for instance, if we, take, if we took this one here now, and we decided to put that round this here, it would be so big that these lines would probably be straight. You would look on here and you would find it's just straight, it wouldn't look like a Turk's head. So what you have to do is put extra bites in. So that these are called the bites on the, on the top here and this side, bites, extra bites. Usually, like this one, um, is a one, two, three, four bytes. Well, you can imagine this one's about a 50 or 60 bytes. And the way you do that, and I'll just do this, I've made the Turk's head up exactly the same as on the other ones. When the two leads again come together, and you want to follow, you just follow each other around then. This one will follow here, that one will follow there and the Turk's head will be formed. Exactly the same as, as we did on this question of Peter's. So what you do here is you separate these. In fact, what I'll do, I'll take these off 
And what you do, if you're going to put this around something as big as that, just give it a bit of line. It's about the only time in a Turk's head you can actually expand it. Um, okay, right. And there's the two pieces still running alongside each other. But what you do then is you, you actually do exactly what you did to, to make the Turk's head. You remember it was left, I forget which way you go now, but it was like left over right or right over left. If you do it the wrong way, it won't work anyway. So we go over there, that would be under and over, but you can see it wouldn't lock that way, under and over, and it would open up. So the thing is, you'll have to practice that yourself. Um, over and under, and that one seems to work very good. And then you bring this one and then just follow it. So you actually end up in the same position as you did when you finished the Turk's head. But you can see how you've increased this. You've increased the bites. Now you can carry that on as long as you like. You can put the Turk's head around this boat if you like, if you've got enough line. But it's, it's just basically just pulling it out again the two leads together, and like I say, you can work that out yourself. If it, you, You're literally plaiting, so you can cross over. So this one would go through there. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, if I, if I went that way, you can see it just wouldn't work. So it goes over that way, and then you can then plait it. Exactly the same as forming the Turk's head. And this one, then, that's gone under, so that one would go over there alongside that. And there you go. And you can see how eventually you can have it as long as you like on that. So that's, that's the way to expand the bites in the Turk's head on the first lead. Ah, this is a good one. When you completed the key ring, let me do what I've done here. Uh, one of the questions we're being asked is, how do we, where do we get this loop from? How do we produce the loop? Now, the best way of actually doing that is to complete your Turk's head and then pull it back, pull one of the, la the leads back, and you can have it to what you would think would be uh, the height you'd want it. I mean, you can, if you're doing something, you can have it that long if you like or whatever to about there. Then, if that's the height you'd like, then pull it back then. Find, find its, uh, its lead and just pull it back. Now what I usually do is take it back about five or six sometimes. I like to take it, take it back away from where I'm going to cut here so that when, you, when you've actually got the key ring, key ring made up, you don't see anywhere where you've actually sealed the ends on it. Um, so if we go back, see we're leaving those away from it now there, and pull it back, and that's it, that's it, it's there, so that when you cut this off in here, you've got a good solid place for your key ring on that. Um, one of the things I do on these, I, I used to sew these, or I think I've done it on that, no, I used to sew them um, to make this bit neater here to tighten it, but lately, I was introduced um, to this stuff and it's called uh, electrician's uh, shrink and they put it on wires and all you do is rub a lighter over it um, and it'll shrink tight onto it like that. Um, so you just put that on, pull it down. Now you just rub a lighter, well, you can use a hairdryer actually or something like and that will shrink onto there and then that's the key ring and that's the loop. Now the next uh, was books. Now I've got something like, must be 25, 30 books. And to be honest with you, I looked through them and I decided it would be impossible to give a review on them all because some are good, some are just dreadful, some of them I can't follow. So I thought, right, if I could only have two books, which, were they, which two books would I particular have. So I'll just go through those now. Now this book, pretty well every good knot tire, and uh, some of those, some really good knot tires on the internet, that's for sure, and we certainly don't want to compete with them. 
This book, to me, would be the panacea of knotting. It's got every knot that's drawn in here, from what I can make out over all the different books I've come, it seems to have come from here, but then it's, it, it's produced sometimes a little bit better and a bit clearer. Now this particular book, book I've had this for over 30 odd years, and I've got to be I've got to be honest with you, I, I, I don't use it as much. And the reason for that is I, I find it difficult uh, to follow hand drawings where somebody's actually drawn it. Um, for instance, you know, if I look at these sorts of things here, there's no way I can follow this. Before you would ever buy this, I would recommend you, because they're about 50 pounds now, I'd recommend you go to the library and um, maybe you can get one out of the library and have a look at it and just see whether, you know, that's the sort of thing. But that is a beautiful book. In fact, you know, I, it's, it's actually mind-boggling how somebody, they actually could actually draw all this. It's just, and, and the write-up on it's very good. So it could be used as a reference book. If I could have two books, these would be the two books. This one, Creative Roadcraft, I've had this for many years. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on, on there for you and I'll, we'll, we'll just let you absorb that. So if you want to come back to it and then you can see that. That's Whether you'll still get this now or not, you'll probably get it in a second hand one, but that's that. Okay, so we'll put that in the back. Now this to me, because because I basically really go for Turk's heads more. That's the thing I do. Once you've actually achieved a knot, that's the end of it and you can do it again. But with the Turk's head, it's absolutely endless. And I've been doing it for donkey's years and I still do it now. Carrying a piece of line with me, um, Turk's heads for me. And this is what was one of the best books for, as you can see, the Turk's heads. And f when you first, if you were to just try and do the Turk's head from this book, ter terribly difficult. But if you look on our website and we introduce you how to start off into the Turk's heads, forming them, um, then you can pick this up quite easily. Where is also, it gives you quite, it tells you the bites and the, the leads on it. So that would be one of my books, that one there. The second one, would be this book. Now this book, I bought this, I worked at Shell Research donkeys years ago and there used to be a little bank on the side uh, where people used to go and collect their paychecks and what have you and on the side they had a little cabinet and in that cabinet there was some sort of books and one was on knotting, it had a nice cover on this, it's gone now. So I, I bought this then and I'm going back like in the 70s maybe. And this is the best book of all that I've had. And just before we go on, I'll just give you time to just take that. Now, the only way you'll probably get one of these is second hand. In fact, this one is the second one I've had. I gave it to somebody who was struggling with the knots at one time, gave him the book and felt like I'd lost an arm. And it took me a long time to get it back. There we go. And I found it second hand on, I don't know whether it was just on uh, eBay or somewhere like that. Now this book to me, if I, this book to me was the thing that really started me off and what I liked about the illustrations on it, I liked the fact that there was a hand actually holding it so I can see actually where they put it and it's got all the different types of knots that, you know, this sort of thing, the jury and the ocean mat square, an absolute book and a half for me that and that to me after all these books and all the books I've got if I had to pick one it'd probably be that so that's the books now having said that I don't use the Ashley book of knots about two years ago or more uh, Russell actually introduced me back to it by showing me a knot he'd done and I thought, right, we're going to have a go at that one for sure. And I'll, I'll show you the knot. This is a photocopy um, 
from the Ashley um, here. Now I tried this before some years back and I honestly just got lost in it, absolutely got lost in it. But once Russell had explained it a little bit better for me, um, what, what, it, what, what he actually did, he actually made um, a cork board. This was just two pieces of cork. Um, just put on with double-sided tape and he blew these up from from this one and then we could start we could follow it and when you come to a ring on here one of these rings mean under so you would go under and I I did two three tries of this and it just didn't come out at all uh, I put it away for a bit and then I went back again and I had another go at it and what I was actually doing it was that if you look on here, it's exactly like our Turks heads that we do. Um, let me see, I've got one here, 217, this one. When you finished it, these two, the, the start of it and the finish come alongside each other, just like they do when, we actually, when we're actually doing a Turks head here. And each time I did it, these didn't come together. And I thought, well, there's got to be a mistake in here some way. And I tried and tried again. And then I realized then, when I studied these, I found that if you look at this one, this is uh, 2218, the start of it here and the finish of it, they don't, they don't actually come together. And that was the problem I had. So when I finished the knot, this, uh, this, this lead was here and the end of it was here. And there was no way that I can cross this over to there to go round, and that's what I did. I thought, well, you know, if I went round here again, I'm gonna come back out at the same place and nothing's happening here. Russell came up with the answer as normal. And if you go to 2217, the both of these come together. The, so once you've actually done the knot, that's like having a Turk's head. It would be like me putting my hand through the middle and I've got these two leads. And now I can start off and go round again and it'll come out and I ex expand it to three. Now this gives you a really, really nice knot. Um, here, I'll just give you a demonstration on this. Let me see. It's a bit messy this, so you'll have to just stay with me for a bit. Right. There's 217. Two what you actually do, you, act, you just start off here at the tail of it and you just follow it round. So if I was starting there, I put my pin in there and a pin in here and it's, it, you have to be concentrated a little bit on this and round you go and as you can see, you're not going under anything, but eventually The end will come that you're going to, let me take this off as though this was it. Now, if this one was coming around here, as you can see, it actually just goes across it, right? On this one, as you come around here, because there's a circle there, you go under it, right? Now, rather than, I've done one of these, rather than go through that, I mean, once this was explained to me, all of a sudden, this become brilliant. But... I wouldn't go, I didn't go near these other knots again. Now on this one, I've, I've completed that one. And there it is. There's my start. Now, th there's the two pieces together, just like when we do the Turk's head. Now what you have to do now is just make sure that you get your fingers in here, that you don't lose it. Keep those two pieces together. Take all the pins out. And that would be like putting your hand through if you'd just done a Turk's head. That's the knot that comes from it. It's a really, really lovely knot, that. Now, that sort of spurred me on to think, right, I'm going to have a go more of this. And I did start to produce some of these. Um, that are sort of like with a smaller, you could add colours into them. Um, a really nice knot. Russell came in one day and he was swanking. He had a, an oval. Um, an oval knot and I thought oh god I've got to get one of those and it was this one 
But I wasn't happy on it because you have to fudge the end of it anyway. I thought we we're going to have to have a go at that. Now I, I I'd like to just show you that knot if I can, but it's probably in my bag. There, if you could just pass me that bag. Yeah, there it is. Now I've only ever done one of these, and I'm certainly not going to do another one. That's the knot it, it produced. A beautiful knot, but somewhere along here, at the very end of it, it's wrong. And that, that actually put me off a bit. It, it, you have to fudge it. And you have to fudge it because these two things here, they don't come together again. They, if, if they came together like that on the two lines, that, that would do me. But at the end, I, I had to open one up, put it in, put a bit of glue on and that. But when you look at this, and this was a polystyrene um, egg shape, and we just filed it down and that. Now this is a question we get asked an awful lot. The line, where do I get all my line, all my colours from? Right, well, the blue, let me just empty these out. I've had to put them in these bags here because you can imagine this is a duck shoot and it's going to be all over the place. That's where I get this line from. Now this line, let me just let you give you a chance to to have a look at that. Right, this line is at three millimetres and um, I'll just put it on this background here. Three millimetres in diameter and they sell it in 100 metre spools um, and they have black, white and blue. They don't have red, unfortunately. I've, I've been on to them many, many times to see if, uh, if, if uh, they ever get any red, but they don't. It's called mouse line, and I think that it's used on yachts, actually, to, to sort of lower down, or that's where they originated from, where they actually lower it down the sort of centre of the mast to pull up wires and that. It's called mouse line. I've always used that. Now, when I was buying, I think it's still about the same now. It's about 15 pounds. Uh, for 100 meters but I mean it's a nice Christmas present or birthday present and it will last you a heck of a long time that um, in 100 meters. These colored ones I just get these from um, let's see where we go. Uh, oh oh let me just go first if you just wanted a piece of small or piece of line and you're doing an actual knot and you don't want to buy 100 meters then if you go to this one which is Abacan if you want to buy line where it's just you just want a meter or two meters or three meters then i i actually go to abacan fabrics and these are all over the country um and my wife goes there for curtain materials and what have you i've never got me in there in a million years but now i'm never away from the place because you can go in and buy a piece of gold of, and sort of like 25p for a meter um, uh, any colour you like and roughly around the three, three and a half millimetres. So that, that's a good one to keep up to um, on Abacan. Now these I buy and they're so expensive. If you think of that, I would get on here, I'll get a hundred metres from Force 4 here for 15 pounds. And this is what I've been paying is uh, seven pounds 75 and that was like a couple of years ago uh, no yes last year seven pounds 75 and um, i think what do we get on there i get 22 meters on that so to me but the beauty of this is you can get all the different colors you can get green blue red and white so that's where i th mainly where i get the line that I'm doing these small knots with. Now just lately, and you can see how much I've been using, I've been getting this off the internet. Um, it was on eBay and they have three millimeter and uh, four millimeter. I, I, I've got, uh, there's a piece of four. So I bought a spool of this and a spool, spool of three and a spool of four. That's really nice. Now what this is, they tell me, when if you look on there, it's starter pull K pull light for um, uh, I think for lawn mowers or electric uh, uh, not electric um, for chainsaws 
Um, and, I, and that cost me only about eight pounds. And on there, I think we've got 100 meters of that, 100 meters, 3.5 mil. This one's four. Now that is good. And I find this type of roll um, is very good for practicing with because it stays, you know, sometimes it's amazing what the difference, different types of line uh, can make it, you know, something that's very difficult can all of a sudden become easier if you've got the right type of line. So though that's the lines basically that I use actually. Now one of the things what we wanted to do, or well, well, what I would like to do on here, is introduce people, older people, into the knotting. You know, once you, even if you've worn out the, the new hips and knees that you've had and you've worn the second pair out, then it's time to uh, look for a hobby. And to me, what we're trying to do is get older people to be introduced into this hobby. Um, now, obviously there's 4,000 knots here in this book, but I wouldn't go that way. I would pick a knot that you like. And one of the I recommend to you is the Turk's head because this Turk's head, I've been doing this now for donkey's years and I'm still doing this. And there's so many variations of it, and especially in uh, one of the books that I recommended to you. And that way you don't get, you don't get into this sort of minefield of knots confusing. If you stick to one knot, and I would recommend at this stage, the Turk's head. And if you go to our website, uh, liverpoolshipsandsailors.com, and sort of filter your way in to just concentrate on the Turk's heads, you know, the simple ones as well and use tubing, tubing to put them on when you've completed them. And honestly, you'll have, uh, there's a hobby to be had just in the Turks' heads. Now, like I say before, those that uh, are under 75, if you just like to look away for the next 30 seconds. Now this is, as you're getting a bit older, your eyes go a little bit, then a magnifying glass. Now this one is just a small one, um, that we use on the boat here, but there's some really good ones, huge ones, four or five inches across, um, terrific birthday and Christmas presents and what have you. And the other thing is, is to take, you don't have to use this thin line. If you find any hard of it with your eyes, then this is a nice piece. This, this is a good size to use. So when you practice your Turk's heads uh, from our website, don't use the line I'm using, use it this big because that way, and that you can carry that with you. I used to, I mean, I used to make knots, oh gosh, out of little thin types of, much thinner than that. And over the years, I mean, I can't go, I, I can't leave the house without this. This is my comfort blanket. Um, and I'm already getting, as you can see now, I'm moving up the scale as well. Um, so I would recommend um, that when you're practicing, if you look on our site, um, you can actually, use heavier line. Um, the other thing is, and I think later on, um, on some of our demonstrations, I will sort of move a little bit off the Turk's head into flat um, knotting, which is a bit like on the cork boards, but not as complicated as that. Things like the ocean plat uh, mats, where we can do mats sort of this big with that size, um, and then you can actually, in, in, if you increase this, you can increase it up and up and up to probably something like these things that we've done for demonstrations here. It's a nice knot to do actually. And again, if you look at it, it's basically, I always think they call them all different, but if I put my hands in here and pull it round, it's probably a, an elongated Turk's head. But that's the sort of thing I think we'll, we'll sort of move to. Um, the idea is, is if you're going to pick, if you want to start it and use it as a hobby, these, these items here, I don't know if you can see on there, these items, these are the items, that's, that's all you would need and a nice little bag, you can, a nice little makeup bag, um, you can uh, steal. And that would be the tweezers. Now this is um, a pin. Um, you can buy these on the internet. Russell made these. Um, we made it out of brake lining, a uh, brake tube, that's what, a hydraulic brake tube. But I'm sure you can think of something that 
uh, you can utilize to make something like that. But I've only been using that now for months. Um, I have always used um, this, I, uh, the, the, the tweezers. You can actually open the lays up on it. Let me see if we've got a knot here that I can open the lays up on that a bit. If you can, you can see how close I can get into there and take it round. I can also use the point of it sometimes, if it's tight, to just get underneath it. So I couldn't do it without the tweezers really. So you don't really need that, but if you can get hold of one, sellotape. Now, if you don't wanna, when you cut the rope and it's frayed on the end here, there's sellotape on the end and it saves you using a lighter. But, you know, scissors, we don't use knives because you get some nasty cuts. Now this is one of the main things as well. And I've had these for many, many years, in fact, some of them have been in the, the washing machine quite a few times. When you're actually doing a knot and you start to carry the rope with you and you got the line with you and you're going to go out um, somewhere and you've got the line with you, I always take this little knot book with me and they're just little notes I've made because sometimes, the Turk said, it will stretch you um, into such a state that you, you just can't go any further and yet you can look in there and you'll just see that little thing and off you go again. Oh, just before I finish, there's one actual, um, the board, can you just pass me that? The, the, that one, yeah, yeah. This one is worth coming back to as well. It may be something you'll come back to later. The biggest knot, the biggest knot you can do on your hand, and it'll take you a long while to do, and again, this is another thing that'll send you to bed in a cold sweat, but eventually, that's about the biggest knot you can do on your hand, which, which on there is a five by six lead. Because after that, the whole thing comes too big. So again, uh, Russell came up with this. This is one of his, I think, from some years back anyway. And what you do, if you go, again, for, for those who have not seen this, on, on liverpoolshipsandsailors.com, go back and have another look at this. Uh, if you can't, you know, you can get somebody to make that for you. Um, and that actually lets you expand then the Turk's head beyond this five lead here. And you get that sort of thing then. You can, you can actually take this bigger. And if you want to, I mean, you can have that. It depends how big this board is, but you could have it this long if you wanted. But that a Turk's head's for covering. Now I use polystyrene balls. I get these from where, where I said before, Abacan and you can get all different sizes and they're, they're quite cheap really. You have to remember with these, we use them on the boats and that because they do float. Um, uh, but if you want to, I tried um, table tennis ones and they collapse in on you. But if you wanted one, a nice ball that's hard. It's a shame to throw those sorts of things in the bin. And I've, lots of these knots I've got on here, they've got this deodorant ball in them. Okay, well, that concludes today. I um, hope that we've been able to answer some of your questions. Um, and you can see, I know I go on a bit heavy about it, but I am passionate about getting uh, older generation into knotting um, because that's the thing that stretches your brain. I don't think there's anything better for me is when you can actually produce a Turk's head. It's an unbelievable feeling and that's what we want to get over to people. Um, so I guess that's it for today and hopefully we'll see you again um, in our next video and maybe we'll come up with some um, nice flat knots which are quite easy to do on cork boards. So I think from Russell and I, which are now going to pump our bilges out, we'd like to thank you all and see you soon.